the DuPont Cavalcade of America, starring Brian Donlevy. Tonight, the DuPont Company brings you Big Boy, starring Brian Donlevy on the Cavalcade of America. First, here is Gain Whitman. Good evening. Step into fall with a bright, cheery, new-looking home. Paint your walls with Speed Easy, the easy-to-use resin oil emulsion paint. You'll be amazed at how little it costs to paint an average-sized room. Just thin Speed Easy with water and apply over wallpaper or any interior wall surface. It comes in white and 11 attractive colors. Remember, it's speedy, it's easy. It's Speed Easy, one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. Now, Big Boy, starring Brian Donlevy as Babe Ruth on the Cavalcade of America. Excuse me, mister. Is this seat taken? No, it's not, son. Thanks. Got here early, eh? Yes, sir. I wanted to get here before he did. <laughs> me too. Where's he gonna sit? That box down there, below us. Yeah? Gee, you know, I did never see him play. No, I guess you didn't. How old are you, son? Thirteen. <laughs> That'd make you about one year old when he put away his bat for good. You see him play? Sure did. Mr. Baseball himself. Gee, Babe Ruth. You know a lot about him, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I do. Many's the day I sat in these stands and watched the Bambino bust fences. Yeah. Gee, he was lucky. Played baseball all the time. Me, I gotta go to school. (laughs) Well, now, it was the school that started the Babe in Baseball. You're kidding. No, no, I'm not. Ah, go on. No, no, really, Sean, really. I, I do know a lot about him. Hey, look, we got maybe half an hour before game time. How would you like me to tell you about the Babe? Well... Okay, go ahead. All right, son. Uh, well, my story about the babe starts when he was younger than you. I guess he was about, uh, well, seven. Nobody called him Babe then. His name was George. George Herman Ruth. It was in Baltimore. Just about the turn of the century. It's a cinch. Sure, he ain't looking. So we walk up and take a couple of apples. Gee, George, what if he sees us? What if he does? We run fast. What's the matter? Got cold feet? No, I ain't. Then come on. Now, easy now. Pretend like we're going past, and then make a grab. And this time, pick the ripe ones. Yeah, all right. Now, got one. Me too. Hey, what's the matter, you kids? Hey, police! They're stealing my apples, the police! He's coming after us, George. You go one way, and I'll cut through the alley. Go on, Run! Uh, hey, look out. Uh, just a minute, young man. <laughs> you almost knocked me over. Listen, I'm in a hurry. You must be, with a handful of apples. Listen, I gotta go. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, you, you caught him, father, huh? He's a bad boy. Hello, Giuseppe. What's the trouble? Mm, this a kid. This a George Root. Oh, this is George, huh? Let me go. Take your old apples. Every day's a steal of my apples. Let me go. Oh, just a minute here, just a minute. I'll pay for the apples, all right, Giuseppe? Uh, wh- well, uh, all right, Father. You, you pay me when you want. Out of it, you? Uh, thanks, the you. So you're George Ruth. Huh? <laughs> uh, you know, I was looking for you, George. Someone told me you might be where the uh, pickings were good. What do you want me for? Uh, I want to talk to you, George. I don't want it. Oh, now that was a perfectly good apple. You didn't have to throw it, did you? I don't think so. Who are you? Well, I'm Brother Matthias from St. Mary's Industrial School. School? That was a pretty fair toss for that apple, George. You're southpaw, huh? What about it? You know, the school could use a lefty on the baseball team. Baseball? Well, sure, we got several teams. But I don't think we got a single southpaw. You got baseball teams there? You bet. As a matter of fact, one of the school teams is playing this afternoon. Now, if we were to walk this way, we'd pass right by the lot. It should be about the second inning. So, 
George Herman Ruth went to St. Mary's Industrial School. And played baseball? Well, not all the time. He learned the tailoring trade, too. But baseball was what he liked best. He turned out to be a pretty good pitcher, too. He coached teams at St. Mary's for many years, and the kids loved him. They loved the big, broad-shouldered guy who taught him the game, gave him pointers, worked with him all he could. And then, one day when he was older, uh, Brother Matthias spoke to him. Come in and sit down, George. Thanks, Brother Matthias. But, George, you're a young man now. Yeah, I guess I am. Never thought about it, though. We have. And about your future. Future? Mm-hmm. Do you think you'd like the uh, tailoring trade? Well... Oh, um, I see. You don't, huh? Not so much. <laughs> You'd rather play baseball, huh? I guess I would, Brother Matthias. Well, George, remember one thing. The game itself isn't everything. Oh, it's a great game. And we stress it here because it teaches fair play, sportsmanship. Yes, sir, I know. And you've got to have those things for the real game. The game of life. You remember that? I will, Brother Matthias. I know. We've watched you, George. And we've got a hunch that someday a lot of folks will feel the same as we do. That you'll be an inspiration to others as you are to the kids here. I hope so. Now, uh, Brother Gilbert at Mount St. Joseph has arranged for someone to come here to see you tomorrow. Who is it? Well, you'll see you tomorrow. But I'll tell you this now. It's got a lot to do with your future. Well, there he is, Mr. Dunn. You, you see the big fellow, the southpaw? Hmm. You think he's good, Brother Matthias? Yes, I do, but then... You know more about it than I do, Mr. Dunn. Oh, well, maybe. All right, get him over here, will you? Yes. Uh, George? Oh, uh, George? Come here a minute, will you, please? Played every position on the team, huh? Yes, and well. But uh, we think he's better as a pitcher. We'll see. Hello, Brother Matthias. Say, that new kid Johnny's shaping up pretty good. I think he'd make a good infielder. Uh, George, I want you to meet Mr. Dunn. Oh, how are you, Mr. Dunn? Fine, George. How are you? Well, well, I've... Uh... I've got some work inside. Uh, I'll leave you with Mr. Dunn. Sure, I'll see you later. Uh, Brother Gilbert of Mount St. Joseph tells me you like baseball. Yeah, I love it. Well, let's see. Give me a catcher's mitt. Uh, you going to play? Mm-hmm. Now, uh, get out to the pitcher's box. Well, what do you want me to do? Toss me the fastest ball you've got. Fastest? You're going to catch it? You toss it. I'll do my best with it. All right. Here it comes. Yeah, that's your best? Wouldn't have dented a cream puff. All right, try this one. Yeah, yeah, that's more like it. Now let's see your curve. All right, here's the best I can do. Okay, George, come on in. How was the curve? Could be improved, I guess. <laughs> I'm sorry you didn't like it, Mr. Dunn. Oh, it was good, son, but remember, most everything can be improved. You don't want to forget that when you're playing with the Baltimore Orioles. When I'm what? I'm Jack Dunn. Jack Dunn. I manage the Orioles. Why, well, I, I know, but you want me to play for you? And get paid for it. $600 a year. That sound all right? $600? What's the matter? Don't you like it? Oh, sure, sure, you bet. But I was just thinking. Uh, what about? Well, about whether I can make good as a professional. Mm, I think so, son. But it's entirely up to you. Just about finished packing, George? Oh, just a couple more things, Brother Matthias. You excited? I feel kind of funny in my stomach. Guess I'm afraid. Of what? That you won't make good? Maybe. But most of all, I hate leaving here. I know, George. But about making good, you can't miss if you always remember one thing. What's that? Come here at the window. What do you see out there? Just the kids? Why? Well, those kids will see that you made good. They will. I don't understand. They idolize you, George. Because you stand for everything they think is good. <laughs> Swell, as they put it. And someday they'll look up to you as a hero. <laughs> so, George, you have to make good. Well, son, Babe went to the Orioles, and he made good all right. His salary was tripled after the first few months. Then he was sold to the major leagues, Boston Red Sox. In 1915, Ruth hit his first home run at Fenway Park against the Yankees. He was a pitcher then, too, don't forget. 
And in 1918, the Red Sox won another World Series, and Babe Ruth topped the great Christy Mathewson's record by pitching 29 consecutive scoreless innings of World Series play. How do you like that? And then, then in 1919, in the office of Pop Barrow, the manager of the Red Sox... Babe, uh, I've got something to talk over with you. All right, Pop, what about? I think your pitching days might be over. Say that again, Pop. <laughs> Get that silly look off your face. There's nothing wrong. But you just said... How'd you like to play every day instead of once or twice a week? Pitch every day? Nope. In right field. Hmm? In the outfield? Uh -huh. But, Pop, look at my pitching record. Hey, right now, I'm looking at your batting average. I could use that big bat in the lineup every day. Well, I kind of like pitching, Pop. I know. But it's up to you, babe. One way, you take your regular turn on the mound. And the other, you're in every day. Hmm. What do you say, Pop? I told you. I could use that big bat. And that's it. You're the boss. Swell. Besides, the kids will be seeing more of you if you play every day. You know, you've become sort of an idol to them around here. That's nice to hear. And that right field spot is a great place for the kids. Yeah, that's right. There's lots of them out there. <laughs> I think there'll be more now. And Pop Barrow was right. The babe's bat began to pound the horse hide. That big swing and then the crack as the ball sailed out. Oh, it was music. And what music? It wasn't long before babe's pitching record was put in the shade by his hitting. Outfielders kept backing up. Pitchers got a little nervous when the big boy came to the plate. And you know, the babe set a record that everyone swore would stand up. Twenty-nine homers in one season. Gosh. Well, there wasn't a team in the circuit that wouldn't have given anything to have the babe in the lineup. And then, one day, again in Barrow's office... But, Pop, I don't get it. You letting me go. I don't want to, babe, but you've been sold. But I don't want to leave. I like the socks, and I like being with you. You think I like losing you? But it still goes. You've been sold for 125000 <whistles> Who paid that much? The Yankees. But I... The Yankees? But, Pop, they've never won a flag. I know. But Jake Rupert's buying players to win one, and you're... you're... selling me to a team that never won a pennant. Now, listen, babe. It's not the team, it's the game. You'll be playing under a great little manager, Miller Huggins. I think this is your big chance. Well, if that's the way it is, I guess there's no changing it. Your salary will be 20000 That's twice what it is now. But I still hate to leave. <laughs> What's so funny, Pop? <laughs> oh, nothing's funny. I was just thinking... If you think there were a lot of kids in Boston, wait till you get to New York. And uh, something else. Don't let them down, babe. Even though you're good enough to be worth 125000 Pop, if I ever let the kids down, I wouldn't be worth a nickel. Not even to myself. <laughs> You are listening to Big Boy, starring Brian Dunleavy as Babe Ruth on The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Sold to the Yankees for $125,000, Babe Ruth starts his first season with the New York Yankees in 1920. Now, our story continues as the old-timer in the stands tells a 13-year-old boy the story of the great Bambino. You remember that record the babe hung up with the Red Sox, 29 homers in one season? Yeah. <laughs> well, son, the first season with the Yanks, the babe clouded 54 homers. Gee. Oh, that was nothing. In 1921, his second season, 59 balls sailed out of the park, Ruth starting them on their way. And by 1923, when the Yankee Stadium was built, people were calling it the house that Ruth built. <laughs> and uh, it was just after a game there when Ruth left the locker room. Well, so long, you guys. See you tomorrow. So long, Hello, George. Brother Matthias. How are you, George? Oh, it's good to see you. How are you? Just fine. You you didn't come all the way to New York just to see me, did you? Well, yes, but mainly to find out something. Huh? What? 
Let's go outside. Oh, sure. Right down the corridor here. My car's at the side. Maybe we'll go for a little ride and talk. Yeah, huh? I'd like that. You uh, said you came to find out something. What? Well, Brother Gilbert and I have watched your career. The career of the greatest player in the game. <laughs> of course, we may be prejudiced. <laughs> that could be. But what did you come to find out? Whether you made good or not. Made good? But you just said... That, that you were a great ball player? Yes. But there's something else. Oh, here, we go out this way. Hey, there he is. Hey, there he is. Hi, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Sign this for me, will you, babe? Come on, please. Yeah, Come on, babe. Oh, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute, hey, wait a minute fellas. Who was here first? I mean, yeah, I was here first. Oh, oh, now, wait a minute. Will you take it easy? Hey, 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 listen. I've got a very important friend with me today, and I haven't seen him for a long time. Now, uh, I tell you what. Suppose you all come back tomorrow, oh, and I... Oh, we've been waiting all day, babe. Oh, all right, all right. I tell you what. Hey, Sammy, get a flock of balls, good ones, and give them to the kids, will you? Is that all right, fellas? Oh, oh yes, sure. Yes, yes, sure. Yes, okay, yes, well, I'll see you tomorrow. Yes, yes, tomorrow. Yes, <laughs> They're standing there every day. I get a big kick out of them. Yes, uh, I see that. Now, uh... What were you saying about wanting to find out something? I just did, George. I just found out that you have made good. The most important way. With the kids. That was the real Babe Ruth. Standing out in right field, joking with the kids in the stands, hitting home runs for them, never forgetting them. Must have felt awful good to be that famous. I guess so. And you know, the babe set a record for home runs, 60 of them in one season. Gosh. But I don't think that the 60th homer meant as much to him as just one other. It was the whole 60 rolled up into one. How was that? Well, um, I'll tell you this way. It was one day that the babe and a man named Sylvester walked into a hospital. You see, Mr. Ruth, my son's seriously ill. The doctor says medicine's done all it can for Johnny. And now he needs a boost to his morale. He's got to have something to hang on to, to look forward to. I see, but what about me? Where do I come in? Well, you're his hero. And maybe seeing you will help him. Ever since he was old enough to understand baseball, it's been Babe Ruth. And the one thing he wanted most in the world was to see you knock a home run. Well, I'm glad you came to me. His, his room's right here. You go on in. I'll wait outside. Okay, Mr. Sylvester. Sorry, sir, but uh, Johnny's not allowed visitors. It's all right, nurse. I've got permission. Hiya, Johnny. Huh? I... Why, you... I, I know you. Babe Ruth. She. You sick, Mr. Ruth? No. No, I came to see you. And uh, how about call me Babe? I'll call you Johnny. See me? Sure. Brought you something. Look. A baseball. Yep. American League baseball and a bat. Like yours? Well, it's something like it, but maybe a little lighter than mine. Here's a glove, too. Now, you're all set up. Just as soon as you get better, you'll be able to go out using them. Gee. Gee. You, uh, you're gonna get better, huh? I'll try hard, Mr. Ruth. You bet. I'll try as hard to get better as you do to get a homer. Then that'll do it. Is it hard to hit a homer, babe? No, it's as easy as falling off a log. Almost as easy as it is for you to get better. Is that easy? I'm pretty sick, I guess. Look, I'll tell you what, Johnny. If I hit a homer for you this afternoon, just to show you how easy it is, will you try just as hard to get better? I, I sure will. Okay, it's a deal. Now, you just listen on your radio. Would you... Would you mind autographing this baseball for me, please? Why, sure. Here. To Johnny, I'll knock a homer for you. Babe Ruth. Thanks. Gee, thanks a lot, babe. It's okay, kid. Now remember, you and I got a bargain. <laughs> Is it good for Johnny to have that radio on, Doctor? Yes, leave it on. He's shown more interest than he has in days. Uh, how's it going, Johnny? Gee, Doctor, 
Babe's coming up again. And coming from the Yank dugout is the big boy, the Babe. He's been up twice today, struck out twice. If he's going to hit, it'll have to be this time. His last at bat for the day. Now he's walking to the plate, and Miller Huggins walks over to talk to him. The Babe looks mighty serious today. Hey, hey, babe. Now, wait a minute. I, I want to talk to you, babe. Yeah, what is it? Hey, look, what's the matter with you today? You're, you're pressing too hard. Yeah, I know. Uh, so what if you don't cloud one out? The game's in the bag. Not for me, Hug. I've got to hit a home every day. Take it easy. Tomorrow's another day. Hey, tomorrow will be too late. Well, well, the big boy. Back again, babe. Uh-huh. <laughs> the Indian sign's on you today, big fella. Why don't you sit down and save the trouble of coming up to the plate? You stick to catch and keep your eyes on that apple. <laughs> All right, Ed. Let him have it. The big boy's got dust in his eyes today. Only two more to go, babe. All right, Ed. The big one now. Can't argue about that one, babe. Zip right down the middle. <laughs> no answer? The next pitch, Johnny. The next pitch. Oh, we got the big boy talking to himself. Here it comes again, babe. Watch it. You satisfied, babe? Yeah. Yeah, I am, Huck. I don't get it. I've seen you knock out three in one game, break your own record, and help us win pennants. Now you happen to knock out one in the game in the bag, and you look like the cat that got the canary. You don't get it, Hug. That was the most important home run I ever hit. Well, son, Johnny got better, all right. Yeah. <laughs> That, that must be him. It is. The Bambino himself. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Sitting in the stands today, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the greatest of them all. The one and only Sultan of Swap, the Bambino himself, Babe Ruth. <laughs> Gee, mister. What, son? I got a baseball here. Why don't the babe sign it for me? Why not ask him? Well, I don't know. Maybe he'd think it was fresh or something. No, not the babe. Go on, son. Go on down and ask him. I, I will. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Mr. Ruth. Oh, <laughs> hiya, kid. Miss Ruth, I wonder if you'd autograph this for me. Sure thing. Come on in here. That's the idea. Now, let's see that ball. Hey, that's pretty scuffed. We can do better than that. Hey, Mike. Sure. Mike, toss the ball up here, will you? A good one? Sure thing, babe. Here you come. That's better. I'll sign it later, kid. You all alone? Yes, sir. Okay, stay here and watch the game with me. Gee. Play ball. Hear that, kid? The greatest sound in the world. Nothing like it. Just nothing like it. And the babe goes on never to be forgotten. A colorful reality to those who saw him play. A living legend of inspiration to those who didn't. And as another World Series opens tomorrow, there are those who will sit in the stands and remember the crack of his bat, the babe trotting around the bases, that big grin on his face, Mr. Baseball himself. star, Brian Donlevy, will return in just a moment. First, here is Gain Whitman speaking for DuPont. Most of us remember from our school days, rats. They fought the dogs and killed the cats and bit the babies in the cradles 
and ate the cheeses out of the vats and licked the soup from the cook's own ladles. Robert Browning's poem about the Pied Piper cloaked a grim fact. Many a town in Europe did lose its children, and its adults too, to diseases carried by rats, typhus and plague. Just one rat in your house is a health menace. In addition, rats cause an estimated $200 million worth of damage each year in the United States. They gnaw through walls, ruin plumbing, undermine foundations, and destroy electric wiring. Some of those fires you read about, caused by defective wiring, are really caused by rats. On our farms, rats are even worse. The average farm has between 50 and 100 rats. They spread disease, not only to human beings, but to poultry and livestock. They kill baby chicks and full-grown hens. They eat and contaminate grain and other feed. An expensive loss these days when livestock feeds cost more than ever before. A farmer can get rid of them and save both money and food. Food the world badly needs. Science now offers you new rat poisons containing DuPont and 2 a product of chemical research. You can buy many trademarked poisons in which N2 is the killing agent. Any form can be safely and conveniently used by following directions, but you must remember that it is a poison and should be used as such. It comes in three forms, ready-to-use bait, powder, and paste. If you'd like to know more about N2, write to the DuPont Company, Wilmington, 98, Delaware. N2 is one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. Our star, Brian Donlevy. Thank you. Cavalcade would like to take this opportunity to announce that the Babe Ruth Foundation Incorporated, a long-cherished dream of Babe Ruth to help American youth, has been recently formed. Yesterday, Old Stars Day at the Yankee Stadium... The New York Yankees and the Philadelphia Athletics turned over their portion of the day's gate receipts to this worthy charity, the Babe Ruth Foundation Incorporated. Pledge to the best interest of, as the babe puts it, the kids of America. If you were a lawyer and a boy was accused of stealing your car, would you defend him in court? A man named James West did. He did so for two reasons, two dramatic and exciting reasons. You will hear those reasons next Monday night when we bring you Henry Fonda starring in Of Such is the Kingdom on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. The music for the DuPont Cavalcade is composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Our Cavalcade play was written by Bryce Disk, Jr. Brian Donlevy may currently be seen in the United Artists picture, Heaven Only Knows. The motion picture, The Babe Ruth Story, will be produced and directed by Roy Del Ruth and will be released by Allied Artist Productions from the autobiography of Babe Ruth with Bob Considine to be published by E.P. Dutton and Company, Incorporated. This is Frank Bingman inviting you to listen next week to Of Such is the Kingdom, starring Henry Fonda on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. The DuPont Cavalcade of America came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.